Hello and welcome. So with this question, this is actually a continuation of uh, two previous questions that I'll link in the video description. Uh, we're going to talk about the firm supply curve. Uh, in the previous two questions, what did we do? We, um, we were kind of given just very basic information about Bob's DVD company. Uh, you know, we're given fixed cost information and variable cost info. Uh, with that, we were able to calculate, you know, total cost, marginal cost, average variable cost, and uh, average total cost. And we kind of thought about, uh, given different market prices, uh, will this firm shut down? Will this firm uh, continue to produce in the short term or the long term? Uh, and will the firm be uh, have economic profit or economic losses? That sort of thing. Um, so this is kind of a big summary of everything we've done. Uh, before, we've only been dealing with like tables, and so now we're going to draw some curves and uh, discuss the firm supply curve. So where does the firm supply curve come from? Uh, this question is borrowed from Krugman Wells Microeconomics Second Edition from the chapter on uh, perfect competition and the supply curve. So number one is uh, let's draw Bob's marginal cost curve. So again, we uh, discussed uh, marginal cost and how to calculate it um, in a previous video, uh, which I'll link in the video description if you want to have a look. Um, but uh, let me show you what we found there. So we were just given these two columns of information. We were given a uh, quantity of, vari of DVDs produced and what the variable cost is associated with each one. Uh, and then we're also given some stuff, info about fixed costs, which was $50,000. So given that, uh, we could calculate total cost. And then given total cost and quantity produced, we could then calculate marginal costs. So now with our marginal cost, um, again, I'll just walk you through the calculation. So what's the marginal cost for this level here? Uh, the marginal cost for this level is the change in total cost. So the change in total cost is 55,000 minus 50,000 because we're going from 50,000 to 55,000. So that's, 50, that, that's 5,000 divided by the change in quantity produced. So we're going from zero DVDs produced to 1,000 DVDs produced. So it's 5,000 divided by 1,000 giving a marginal cost of five bucks. You continue along with that uh, calculation, you know, the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity, and you get this marginal cost curve here. Uh, and then the other thing to keep in mind is that these marginal costs, the way I've drawn this row is it kind of appears that this marginal cost is associated with a thousand units of production. But this five dollars, this call, this row here actually kind of belo belongs between these two quantities produced, right? So that five dollars is the marginal cost of going from zero to a thousand. So this five dollars kind of belongs between zero and a thousand. Marginal cost of three dollars here is, is the marginal cost of going from one thousand DVDs produced to two thousand DVDs produced, so on and so forth. So these marginal cost curves, this row, these rows here should kind of be set up so that they're between um, the quantity rows. So that when we chart this, which is what the question asks, uh, you'll see that the dots here of you know five dollars uh, is between going from zero to a thousand DVDs produced. The three dollars marginal cost is going from one thousand to two thousand DVDs produced. The one dollar marginal cost is going from two thousand DVDs produced to three thousand, and then all the way going up with the marginal cost of fifty one is the marginal cost of going from nine thousand to ten thousand. So nine thousand to ten thousand has a marginal cost of fifty one. So this is our marginal cost curve, uh, and it should be a fairly familiar curve. It's kind of a U-shaped curve, or maybe a J-shaped curve, where initially it goes down. Initially, um, the way technology works usually is that uh, early on, as you start increasing production, uh, costs start decreasing um, because there's scales for there's uh, what's it called spreading effect. Um, as you produce a bit more, you could find more efficient ways to produce it given the, the same, you know, inputs. Uh, and then after a certain point, uh, there's just, it's called the diminishing returns effect, where uh, as you increase production, uh, you kind of run up to walls of input costs, or you run up to walls of the building you're dealing with. You know, there's only so much machinery, capital, and people you could put into a restaurant or a factory or something. So you'll start dealing, you'll start seeing these increasing marginal costs. Uh, but yeah, this is part A. Part B asks um, over what range of prices will Bob produce no DVDs in the short run? Um, so that we need to think about the uh, shutdown price. So what's the shutdown price? Well, the shutdown price 
is the minimum average variable cost price. So just kind of matter of factly, if you want to memorize something, the shutdown price is where average variable cost is at its minimum. So here's variable cost over different levels of production, and the smallest average variable cost is associated with 3,000 units produced. So for what range of prices will Bob produce no DVDs? The answer is anything less than uh, 3,000. So actually, I think, yeah, 3,000 and below. So these should be all grayed up too. Well, maybe this is where it starts. I'm not going to grade out. So at any price below $3, um, Bob will produce no DVDs in the short run. Why will Bob produce no DVDs in the short run? Uh, the answer, as we discussed in those previous videos in more detail, is that below $3, Bob is not even incurring his variable cost. So if the, let's say the price of a DVD was $2.90, that means for every DVD that they sell, they're getting $2.90, but their variable cost is $3. So they're not even bringing in enough money to pay for their salaries of, and the workers and the inputs. Uh, and that doesn't even take into account that the average total cost is this much bigger number. So they're not, not only are they not contributing to the total costs, you know, those additional fixed costs, they're not even able to pay the wages and the inputs. So they should choose to shut down. Anything above that, um, production is either profitable for them or production uh, is able to contribute some to these fixed costs that it has to pay no matter what. Even if it shuts down, this firm has to pay that $50,000. And the idea is that, you know, at $2.90, not only is it not covering um, any of the fixed cost here, but it's having to pay even more money, you know, say $51,000, $52,000, because it has to continue to pay all of its workers. Um, between $3.00, and the break-even price, uh, it's at least able to make some contribution to total cost. So, right, the shutdown price is the minimum of the average variable cost of the average variable cost, three dollars. So the firm is not going to choose to produce; it's going to choose to go out of business uh, if the market price is anything below three dollars. So now we're asked to draw Bob's individual supply curve. So how do we do that? Well, the supply curve is a mapping or a schedule of quantity produced given a market price, right? So a supply curve uh, for an industry, right, is given these prices, so let's say $50 for a DVD, uh, how much are firms willing to produce at that price? So it's a mapping of uh, quantity to price or a schedule of quantity to price. Um, and a supply curve can be for a single firm, right? It doesn't have to just be for the industry. So this is for a single firm. Um, this, the marginal cost curve, tells us the quantity that the firm will produce given different prices. Remember, um, the firm is going to choose, uh, in order to, the profit maximizing quantity for a firm is such that marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is just price. So this firm is gonna maximize its profit by or minimize its loss by producing along this curve. So given a market price of 30 by producing about between eight and 9,000 DVDs. If the market price is 20, this firm is gonna maximize profit or minimize loss by producing 6,000 to 7,000. However, anything below those $3, right? Remember in, in part B, we, we discussed why uh, if the firm produces, if the, the market price is less than $2.90, how the firm is going to choose to shut down. So at anything below $3, the firm just chooses not to produce at all. Um, and then conceivably, the supply curve could continue to go up infinitely. However, we didn't really calculate things up there. So this is the supply curve given, which given an input of a price, you know, whatever the market price is along this axis, it tells us how much this firm will choose to produce. Um, so this is the firm supply curve. So it's a supply curve for Bob's DVD production. Uh, if we wanted to go from firm to industry supply curve, what we do is uh, we'd aggregate, or we'd accumulate, or we'd sum up, you know, we'd add together all of the individual firm supply curves. And that would give us the uh, industry supply curve for the DVD market. Um, Great. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, in the video description, I'll link to the two previous videos that cover questions that build up to this, uh, as well as kind of additional, 
you know, question and problem solutions. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.